once again, we were subjected to the so-called black national anthem, lift every voice and sing before the actual national. I am sick of this. It's not necessary. It's to me played in this context. It's divisive. There's one national anthem for all yes. of us. Every American, there is no point in actually, it's really a middle finger to the country and to those of us who love each other, irrespective of skin color, to try to divide us by race when we get to anthems at the Super Bowl. One of the reasons that aliens won't talk to us is because we're this stupid. We think to combat racism, we should look at everything through color. Hey everyone, I'm Gabe Sanchez and welcome back to What Was That? The Kansas City Chiefs won the Super Bowl, Taylor's version, and it was full of hilarious and embarrassing moments for Republicans, from Donald Trump begging for Taylor Swift's endorsement, to President Biden mocking MAGA's idiotic conspiracy theory, to Republicans being racist crybabies. What the hell is wrong with these people? For weeks, Republicans were screaming from the rooftops that the Super Bowl was a huge psyop to help get President Biden reelected in 2024. This is what I think is gonna happen. There's gonna be like some type of proposal at the after the Super Bowl is rigged for the Chiefs. And then the two of these people become, it's like, reach like crazy levels of absolute fame. And then they use that in order to try and save Joe Biden. And much to their dismay, none of that happened. But here's what actually happened. First and goal. Mahomes plays it. It's there! Hartman! Jackpot! Kansas City! Thank you for oh, coming, baby. I cannot baby. believe that. Thank you. I can't believe you. I Thank you for the support. You. How do you Thank do you for that? coming. <laughs> Thank you for making it across the way across the world. You're the best, baby. Oh, my God. The absolute best. Was it electric? It was unbelievable. And then Biden trolled MAGA conspiracy theorists with a dark Brandon meme in a tweet that said, just like we drew it up. Now, the reason that MAGA tried to push this insane conspiracy is because they're afraid that Biden will beat Trump again in November. As Biden up on Trump, six points, 50 to 44. The Biden team has been trying to pivot to general election mode. They've been focusing on abortion access and on union jobs. And the Trump team has spent the last week or so dealing with his legal issues. Republicans know how influential Taylor Swift's endorsement would be for Donald Trump. And that's why Donald Trump decided to kick off Super Bowl Sunday in the most Trump-like way possible. On Truth Social, Trump simultaneously begged for Taylor's endorsement while also attacking her, saying she was disloyal and he was responsible for her success and wealth. Trump is dripping with insecurity and it's just pathetic, but guess what? Taylor's opinion of him hasn't changed since 2020. After stoking the fires of white supremacy and racism your entire presidency, you have the nerve to feign moral superiority before threatening violence? When the looting starts, the shooting starts. We will vote you out in November. Keep in mind, that tweet was eight months before the January 6th insurrection, so it's safe to say that Trump is not getting her endorsement. It should come as no surprise that Donald Trump is lying about making Taylor Swift so much money. The Music Modernization Act that he's taking credit for deals with digital services like streaming, which is not where musicians make their money. The majority of their income is from merchandise and live events. You know, like Taylor Swift's Eras Tour, which has not only made her the first singer to have a tour gross over a billion dollars, but it's also estimated that she will make $4.1 billion from this tour alone. Get it, girl. And none of that has to do with Trump, but I gotta say, for a guy who claims to be a great businessman, he really knows how to not close a deal. But then again, so many of Trump's companies have either filed for bankruptcy or just outright failed. And that is what triggers Trump's cult the most, knowing that Taylor Swift, a 34-year-old self-made billionaire, is more popular and more successful than Trump will ever be. And leading up to the Super Bowl, Taylor Swift was living rent-free in MAGA's heads, and they couldn't stand it. The tale of mania a few weeks ago when you said she was partially responsible for the Kansas City Chiefs losing a couple of games. Do you stand by that comment? I hope that she's the Yoko Ono of the Kansas City Chiefs and she destroys their dynasty and puts them down in flames. That's why I am proudly supporting the San Francisco 49ers, America's team, on Sunday against All Kansas right. City, Patrick Mahomes, Taylor Swift, you, and Travis Kelsey. You got, Go that, you got Niners. So let me get this straight. Republicans were so triggered by Taylor Swift that they were rooting for the woke socialist deep state of San Francisco? Makes no sense. MAGA idiot DC Drano, which sounds like the name of a backyard wrestler living in his mother's basement, sent this tweet calling the San Francisco 49ers Team Jesus. I guess to be a winner, you have to get the vaccine and support democracy? I don't know, that's just what I'm getting from this photo. Oh, and get this, they also think that Ice Spice is some satanic worshiper for making a rock out symbol during the game. Back here at home, the left has declared open season on people of faith as well. 
In the culture war last night, Americans witnessed what some are dubbing the satanic Super Bowl, including this moment where someone called Ice Spice, who was hanging out with leftist icon Taylor Swift, made what some call satanic hand gestures while she donned a upside-down cross. The moment was uh, sent out on the NFL's official X account. We reached out to the NFL for comment. We've not heard back. Get a life, loser. <laughs> Taylor Swift lives rent-free in MAGA's head so much that the only thing they could complain about was her drinking a beer during the Super Bowl. That's like the most American thing you can do, other than eating hot dogs and drunkenly shooting fireworks on the 4th of July. MAGA conspiracy theorist Laura Loomer tried to attack Taylor for drinking beer, dating men, and then called Donald Trump a sober icon. The funniest part about Taylor Swift chugging a beer is the fact that she can out-chug anti-vax MAGA QB Aaron Rodgers. I mean, the guy couldn't even finish his beer during a Milwaukee Bucks game. How pathetic. So again, I guess the lesson to be learned here is get the COVID vaccine. Who knows? Maybe Aaron Rodgers wouldn't have gotten injured in the first game of the season if he had just gotten the vaccine instead of taking all that ivermectin. You know, on account of it being a dewormer and having zero effect on a viral infection other than giving people uncontrollable incontinence, aka shitting themselves in public. But hey, it certainly hasn't stopped Donald Trump Jr. from desperately trying to hawk the stuff on his podcast. Like we saw with COVID, supply chain chaos, lockdowns, Fauci failures, all of it can make it harder to get the medicine you and your family need in a time of crisis. With the Wellness Company's Emergency Medical Kit, you'll be empowered to take control of your health. The kit includes eight life-saving medications, including amoxicillin, the Z-Pack, ivermectin, to keep on hand, to store away, to use when you need it, as, and along with a great guidebook for safe and effective use. So from tick bites to COVID to extreme public health outbreaks, Every scenario is covered. Wow, looks like it's getting pretty rough over there for the Trump family, but especially for Don Jr. and his nasty beard. Yikes. It might be time for Don Jr. to clean himself up, and what a better way than with today's sponsor, Henson Shaving. Everyone knows how annoying sheep razors are. The cuts, the irritation, and sometimes, you get those little ingrown hairs. You know the ones I'm talking about. It's incredibly frustrating. And don't even get me started with subscription razors. I mean, the headaches that those can cause. That's why you gotta meet Henson Shaving. Henson Shaving is a family-owned aerospace parts manufacturer that has made parts for the International Space Station and Mars Rover. And now, they are bringing precision engineering to your shaving experience. Razor blades are like diving boards. The longer the board, the more wobble. The more wobble, the more nicks, cuts, and scrapes. A bad shave isn't a blade problem. It's an extension problem. By using aerospace grade CNC machines, Henson makes metal razors that extend just 0.0013 inches, which is less than the thickness of a human hair. That means a secure and stable blade with a vibration-free shave. It gets better. The razor has built-in channels to evacuate hair and cream, which makes clogging virtually impossible. Seriously, Henson shaving wants to be the best razor, not the best razor business. That means no plastic, no subscriptions, no proprietary blades, and no planned obsolescence. The Henson razor works with the standard dual edge blades to give it that old school shave with the benefits of new school tech. Once you own a Henson razor, it's only about three to five dollars per year to replace the blades. My first shave with Henson was incredibly smooth and refreshing. The design is sleek and the durability is top notch. The Henson razor is truly so much better than your run of the mill quote unquote traditional razor brand. And the affordability factor is absolutely game changing no more wasting your money on expensive blades. With Henson Shaving, you get a year of blades for $5. It's time to say no to subscriptions and yes to a razor that'll last you a lifetime. Visit HensonShaving.com Gabe to pick the razor for you and use code Gabe and you'll get two years worth of blades free with your razor. Just make sure to add them to your cart. That's 100 free blades when you head to H-E-N-S-O-N-S-H-A-V-I-N-G dot com slash Gabe and use code Gabe. Now, what I find most embarrassing about MAGA idiots like Loomer is that she called Trump her icon. The guy has a known substance abuse problem, has had multiple affairs, and has a history of sexually assaulting and abusing women. Donald Trump raped E. Jean Carroll, and now he owes her a total of $88.3 million in damages for defamation, so... Yeah, Loomer might want to sit down about her so-called icon. Well, actually, icon is an accurate description of Donald Trump. Icon as an icon, people out of their money. But since Loomer invoked Trump's name, let's see what he was up to during the Super Bowl. Wait, 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 let's play that back. Why is Trump making those hand movements in front of a bunch of underage girls? This feels like something out of a creepy Jeffrey Epstein party. Oh, I know why. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
anyway, speaking of sex traffickers, Matt Gates, who allegedly sex trafficked a 17 year old girl, tweeted a conversation that he supposedly had with his wife about why they weren't gonna watch the Super Bowl because they were desecrating America's national anthem by playing something called the Black National Anthem. I don't know what's worse, making up a conversation you have with your wife or being so racist you can't handle a two minute song. Hey Matt, I know you aren't too bright, but there's this button on the remote called Mute. Give it a try on yourself sometime. Andra Day performed Lift Every Voice and Sing, Reba McIntyre sang The Star Spangled Banner, and Post Malone performed America the Beautiful. Republicans like Matt Gates want you to think that the NFL removed the national anthem from the Super Bowl, but they didn't. Not to mention the fact that it's February, as in Black History Month, but no, Gates won't even give them that. And then Megyn Kelly, who admitted to not watching football, also had an issue with the anthem and the halftime show. Once again, we were subjected to the so-called Black National Anthem, Lift Every Voice and Sing, before the actual national, I am sick of this. It's not necessary. It's to me played in this context. It's divisive. There's one national anthem for all yes. of us, every American. There is no point in actually, it's really a middle finger to the country and to those of us who love each other, irrespective of skin color, to try to divide us by race when we get to anthems at the Super Bowl. Looks like Megyn Kelly forgot her pointy white hat at home. Can you imagine? Where's the Hispanic national anthem? Yeah. Where's the, the Asian? Asian that? We brought, we brought Reba right. to the Super Bowl not to sing the white national anthem. Yeah, what are we doing? They had a white national anthem. They'd have burned that place <laughs> down in the first 30 Wait a minute. seconds. Because we yeah. do stupid stuff. If I was an alien and I was a billion years smarter than what we were, and I'm like, all right, hey guys, let's all watch the Super Bowl, then we'll make a decision on whether we should talk to him or not. The minute the black national anthem comes on that's that's supposed to lift every voice, unless you're any other race in the world, we're just gonna right. sit back up. What is wrong with these people? Kudos to Usher for not showing me any vagina for the entire yeah. Super Bowl halftime show. That's a that's progress, unlike with J-Lo and Shakira. Wait, 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 hold on a sec. Megyn Kelly claims that this has been an issue with performances in the past, but yet she still let her kids watch this year's performance? I guess we'll just chalk it up to bad parenting. Also, it's a bit odd for Kelly to complain about this particular issue, considering how she supports Trump, even though he made comments about her menstrual cycle back in 2016. I have no respect for her. I don't think she's very good. I think she's highly overrated. But when I came out there, you know, what am I doing? I'm not getting paid for this. I go out there and, uh, you know, they start saying lift up. Um, if you're gonna, then I, then, and you know, I didn't know there'd be 24 million people. I figured, but I knew it was gonna be a big crowd because I get big crowds, I get ratings. They call me the ratings machine. So I have, uh, you know, she, she gets out and she starts asking me all sorts of ridiculous questions. And, you know, you could see there was blood coming out of her eyes. Uh, blood coming out of her wherever. And honestly, it's just hysterical to watch MAGA desperately grasp at straws for things to get upset about with Taylor Swift, like how much coverage she got during the game. I'm just sick of the over celebration of Taylor being a normal person moments. Like, I don't give a shit what she's doing in the box. I don't wanna see her after every single play. You don't show the other players wives or girlfriends after every play they make. And they've been around with the with the Chiefs a lot longer than Taylor has. I'm sick of it. And they, the shots of her talking to Roger Goodell, I don't care that he's excited she's bringing new eyeball. I'm, I've had it up to here. She's a good songwriter and a good singer. She's not Jesus. This is how they yeah. treat her, and I don't, maybe it's just me, I've had it. Guess what? In 74 minutes and 57 seconds of playtime, Taylor Swift was on screen for a total of 54 seconds. 1% of total playtime is what Republicans are freaking out over. Just imagine being so triggered by a woman who doesn't know or care who you are. And of course, we can't go anywhere in this country without there being a mass shooting, like at the Chiefs Super Bowl parade. Gee, I wonder what could have incited such violence or why we have zero protection against guns in America. During my four years, nothing happened, and there was great pressure on me having to do with guns. We did nothing. We didn't yield. And once you yield a little bit, that's just the beginning. That's the avalanche begins. But the reason that Republicans attack Taylor Swift so much is because they're afraid of her. They know how powerful she is at registering people to vote. And as we all know, democracy is the antithesis of the Republican Party. So whenever Taylor Swift endorses President Biden again for the 2024 election, MAGA will lose complete control of their minds and their bowels, which is what Donald Trump does a lot of the time these days. And until that moment, she'll just keep enjoying her life and dancing with her boyfriend, Travis Kelsey.
Well, that's all for me today. Thanks so much for watching and feel free to follow me at I am Gabe Sanchez. If you're a fan of What Was That and want to support my one person show, please consider supporting my Patreon or my YouTube channel. Your generous contribution goes a long way in growing the show and I couldn't do it without you. Thank you for your support. So until next episode, I'm Gabe Sanchez and this has been What Was That? <laughs> <laughs>